Hey everyone, it's Jack from WhatCulture.com. Time for all the ups and downs from SmackDown Live, but before we get into this video, it's time to address the automatic down for JBL. There's been a lot of backlash because some people seem to think now that Mauro's back in the WWE fold, uh, and he's denied that there was anything to do with JBL, blah, blah, blah. They think that this means that JBL never mistreated anyone and all the rest of it, which I kind of disagree with, having spoken to guys like Justin Roberts at you know, WrestleMania weekend this year, stuff like that. I, I just feel like, Yes, I accept the point that JBL doesn't have too much of a bearing on the show and maybe giving him an automatic down does sort of hinder the result come the end of the video. But instead, here's my alternative. We'll just begin every video with a really quick, and this is the only time I'll emphasize it in this video, but a really quick, just a really quick f*** you JBL. So one, two, three, f*** you JBL. Let's get on with all the ups and all the downs from this week's Smackdown Live. It's the wrong so I've just brought the wrong script into the studio there. Nothing if not professional here at whatculture.com. Thank you very much. The show started with Daniel Bryan heading to the ring. The show started with Daniel Bryan heading to the ring where he announced, of course, that there is going to be the rematch for the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match, which was tarnished by Ellsworth grabbing the briefcase at the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. We all know this. Carmella came out and she was still very cross after her excellent promo last week. She got kind of a similar condensed version of the same promo this week, but it was fine. Um, and then Bryan said, look, Ellsworth, you're not going to be banned from ringside. And everyone went, what? And then Bryan went, no, it's kind of like when Simon Cowell on like the X Factor or American Idol goes, I didn't like that song. I loved it. It was like the old switcheroo. He went, I'm not gonna ban you from ringside. I'm gonna ban you from the whole arena. Phil find that you found that funny, didn't you there? Yeah. Give a little yeah. chuckle. <laughs> Then a fleet of big security men came down and Ellsworth ran away and then tried to jump over the barricade, but he tried to jump from too far away. It was awesome. He went, kind of went just landed on the barrier. It was really good. Um, they all dragged him out, carried him, kicking and screaming. It was really funny. Uh, and a good way to start the show, Carmella still looked strong. And she kind of had some valid points as well. Uh, but so did Brian. So good segment all in all. Uh, it's 1-0 to the ups. Next up, we kicked off the wrestling of the show with tag team action as the Usos, the current champions, squared off against Mojo Rawley and Zack Ryder. And if the babyfaces won, they would get a tag team title shot in the future. But they lost. And they've been sitting on this match for a long time now while Ryder sort of recovered from injury and stuff. And then they've just lost in about five minutes. Can't really agree with this one. It's a bit of a shame. Maybe it'll lead to a heel turn from one of the hype bros. Which one do you think it'll be if it is? Who do, who do you think? I, I think Ryder, Mojo can't turn heel, he's an American hero. Then the New Day came out and they cut a promo saying, we, we're gonna have another match for your belts. They've, effect, they've effectively booked themselves a rematch, which I find, yeah, they deserve one because the Usos ran away last time and lost and lost via count out, so they kept the belts. But the New Day, it's not upon them to come out and say, look, we've got another shot. And the Usos went, all right then, come on. And then the segment ended in really weird fashion because both teams were in the ring, squaring, down, like squaring each other up and staring each other down. And then the New Day went, you forget who you're dealing with. And then they sang the New Day song and the music played and stuff. And it was just the Usos kind of stood there in the ring and the New Day danced. And then it went to commercial. <laughs> Very odd. Down. But in good news, they're gonna have a rap battle next week. This can only go well. Next up, everyone's favorite weekly wrestling segment, uh, the Fashion Police, or fas you know, their Fashion Vice, as it's now known. It's no longer the Fashion Files. It's now an 80s-themed Miami Vice-esque cop drama. It's really good still. They were interrogating the Ascension, uh, and they said, look, we need to find out some information, and they bribed them with tickets to the Eddie Money concert. Eddie Money famous for two songs, I think. Uh, two Tickets to Paradise, which is a, an absolute tune, and Take Me Home Tonight, which is, again, just an absolute tune. Uh, and the Ascension refused to talk. Then the, uh, the fashion police went away and they thought, oh, damn it, we've both been the good cop. And then they realized that's why their interrogation failed. Then they found out their office had been trashed anyway, even though the Ascension were there the whole time. So it's someone else. Who could it possibly be? Um, and then it cut back to the Ascension and they just slowly just took the Eddie Money tickets, which I thought was a really funny touch. This was a great segment. I can't wait to find out who it is, to be fair. That's really... That's a really good mystery. Could be a new team, who knows? Uh, this gets an up. Next up, a women's championship match between Naomi, the champion, and Lana. And this was pretty much a squash. Uh, and originally I was gonna give it a down, but then I realized it was actually quite clever. Like Lana sneak attacked her at first, hit her finisher. Naomi just kicked out in time and then won in pretty short order after that. And it works because, you know, Lana's never pretended to be a, a really good wrestler in the division. She's never been booked as a big threat. She's been booked as this sort of prima donna who thinks she's amazing when she's not. Uh, so it was right that Naomi won. 
especially after the events of the Money in the Bank ladder match, which we'll talk about later on. But it's just, I'm giving it an up by the way, but I just don't know what they do with Lana from here on out because she's lost twice now uh, at, at title shots. Are they going to wait until Rusev comes back and pair her with Rusev? Maybe not, because she's got her own theme music and stuff now. It's really hard to see what they're going to do with her, but hopefully they can find something. This, I think, was the right call. Next up, Aiden English was in the ring and he sang for a bit and it was bad. And then Randall came out and he walked to the ring very slowly, told English to go away. Aiden English has never watched wrestling before because he didn't and then got hit by an with an RKO. Um, and then Randy Orton said, I want another shot at the title. It's like, Randy, you've lost twice against Jinder now, mate. Like, sort it out and you're rubbish since that feud with Wyatt. It's a bit harsh, but you know, it, it's... Then Jinder came out and said, look, I'll give you a rematch, but I'm picking the stipulation. And as everyone on Twitter has joked for weeks and weeks since Jinder got the title, it's a Punjabi prison match. The best stipulation in the world. We'll see that at Battleground. Punjabi prison match. Ah! The Punjabi prison match, of course, remembered for such classic encounters as um, Batista versus the Great Khali and Undertaker versus Big Show when the Great Khali got injured before the match, so they just shoved Undertaker and Big Show in there. Mm. It's not the greatest stipulation in the world, but on the plus side, Randy Orton and Jinder Mahal have a really good shot at making this the best Punjabi prison match in wrestling history. So, swings and roundabouts. This segment gets a firm down, I'm afraid. Next up, we saw Maria and Mike Kanellis. They came out onto the stage. Maria was about to explain what they're doing there for the first time. She was about to go, look, this is why we're here. This is what we want. And she went, look, seven or eight years ago, I was in uh, Sami Zayn's music here and he just interrupted them and made his entrance. Very rude from Sami, the ultimate babyface, allegedly. This isn't good, especially if it leads to a feud between Mike and Sami because I don't want either of them to lose. Sami's a great guy. Uh, he's just a great lad. I just love him. I don't want him to lose because he's like a proper good lad. Um, and Mike's new. And I don't want him to lose because you don't want him to lose his first feud. So there's not a pairing that I would have wanted particularly, but I guess it's, I guess it's okay. And to all of you who said to me, why do, in my video where I ran down everyone it could be, why did you leave Ty Dillinger off? It's definitely going to be Ty. Ha ha ha! It's not fucking Ty, is it? This is why I've got this job and you're sat there on your f Okay. I'm all right, this gets it down. Um, it was a bit silly, I'm all right. Next up, Sammy had his match and it was against Baron Corbin, the only man he wrestles now by law. And it was, you know, it was okay. I was cross at first because Baron won, but then I thought, I'm mm, gonna have to give this an up and I am giving it an up because I always like to see the briefcase holder kept quite strong. And he, you know, he beat another upper mid card guy and Sammy's beaten Baron a few times now. It's not too bad. If Baron's beating Sammy, and I think I just have to get over this thing in my head where I really want Sammy to win all the time because he's not going to. Uh, and it was a good, and it was a good match as well. It was a good match. So hopefully better things for Sammy in future after that sweet feud with Mike Kanellis, and then uh, we'll see what Baron does as well. And finally, to close the show, we had a women's Money in the Bank ladder rematch from Money in the Bank, and it was really good. Better than the one at the pay per view. Better spots, better action, more sort of clever pacing and planning. And, I mean, some of the spots were great. Like, two of them held the ladder and Becky ran up it while it was being held by them. Like, some kind of Kofi Kingston thing. Really good. Uh, Charlotte laid one against the ladder and did the run up the diagonal ladder. That was really good as well. Um, Becky, it looked like Ellsworth did the fake. Ellsworth's going to do it again. The Becky, because Ellsworth had been banned from the arena, but he still made it. Um, and Becky pushed him off and he took a really good bump. Like, he crotched himself on the top rope. Really good. And then Carmella went again, which I think is probably the right result after she won the first one. One complaint, this gets an up obviously, really good. One complaint, Natalia is a f idiot. Natalia threw Charlotte over the crowd barrier and then joined her in a crowd brawl. She climbed over and went, oh, forget about the briefcase, I just want to beat up Charlotte. And then they had a bit of a crowd brawl to get them out of the way. Natalia, you're, you're silly, Billy. Silly. Why did you do that? The briefcase over that way, mate. Can't think of a joke. <laughs> Dude, you could, maybe because you're Canadian and you drive on the other side of the... Mm, do they? I don't think so. No. Okay, then. Mm. So that's all for this week on SmackDown Live. Really good show. Uh, the Ups won. One more thing to mention, which wasn't really a long enough segment to warrant its own up or down, but we found out backstage that uh, there's going to be a number one contender's battle royal next week on Independence Day for the US Championship. Obviously, Kevin Owens was quite cross about that. Uh, who's going to win? Maybe AJ Styles, because he was in the segment with him. 
uh, but this was all backstage and it took about a minute. So I didn't include it in the video, but that's what's going to happen. Anyway, that's all the ups and all the downs from this week on SmackDown Live. I've been Jack from WhatCulture.com. Let us know what you enjoyed or didn't enjoy about the show in the comments below, and I'll see you very soon. Hello, it's Jack here, lead singer of acclaimed covers band American Rachel, I did not write this script, and I'm here to test your wrestling knowledge today. Are you ready? Guess the theme tune that I'm about to hum. Mm -hmm. And so on and so on. Did you get it? Oh, cool. Sorry, Z. Uh, for those of you who didn't get it, it was the Nexus's theme tune. Uh, we are one. We are one. We are one. We are one. For more theme tunes and awesome fun too, buy the new What Culture Wrestling trivia game available at shop.whatculture.com.